Yeah. Okay. So, um, question on extreme tiredness um, and extreme tiredness and uh, not being able to, you know, taking extreme tiredness in the work and in the family situation. What are the ways to transcend that and to overcome that? It's a, it's a great uh, question. And one of the things to know is when one is uh, very, very tired, um, then it's like you're identifying, uh, you're in a very large amount of energy, you know, these feelings of exhaustion, of tiredness. So the way, now there's a few things you can do, there's multiple things you can do. One of them is uh, feeling the feelings. You can feel the tiredness out. Now the thing is with the tiredness, often there'll be a stack. If there's been a recent difficult situation recently, there might be more feelings and tiredness than usual. Like if there was, you know, a loss of some sort or something happening, then there could be more exhaustion than usual because it's like the, uh, the repressed feelings that are coming up are being translated into exhaustion or tiredness. And so just, you know, if you can spend time being with the feeling and feeling the tiredness out. So one of the fastest ways to let things go is to not resist and to not go into a story about it. So that's one of the fastest ways of um, non-resistance. You know, like if, if let's say we've got um, a finite amount of repressed feelings in our, in our system, uh, the optimal, one of the optimal and fastest ways is to resist, to resist that feeling coming out with as little resistance as possible. So how do we resist feelings like, like tiredness? One is to think. Every moment that you're thinking and in a story, you're resisting the feeling. Because you know, your attention is in the thinking, which means there's a resistance at that moment that you're in a story in your head to allowing the feeling to be fully experienced without any form of resistance. So thinking and, and being in a story or a drama when feelings have come up is a resistance to the extent one is more ferociously attached to the story then one is to some extent um, uh, not letting the, the, the tiredness be released. Another thing to know with the releasing tiredness is a thing of um, people who have done feeling feelings shouldn't have this trap, is that um, there can be uh, aspects of consciousness which are mentally trying to repress the tiredness. So if you're trying to function, um, then automatically at a subconscious level you'll be trying to repress the tiredness so that you can function. So when you're sitting with the feelings, you want to let go of that internal uh, subconscious beliefs like, oh, I have to, I, you know, there can be all kinds, I'm sure there's lots of beliefs from the collective, like you can't be tired, you have to perform optimally, you might need to cancel those beliefs, or uh, let me just, you know, I, I'm a soldier, I'll just push this tiredness down and try and function. So there can be this unconscious sort of network of, of subconscious beliefs which are trying not to. That's also a layer of resistance which you want to learn to, um, when, you're, when you're allowing, i.e. not going into story, but also trying to be aware of any subtle unconscious mechanisms which are trying to function and press down. So you want to get, now, of course, one of the fastest ways, but also maybe one of the most more difficult ways for, unless you're an advanced spiritual seeker, is to go into the observer. Mm -hmm. And I've been, now, sometimes it's a catch-22. Well, like if you've got heavy exhaustion, uh, it, it can sometimes seem like, well, it's impossible, you know, I'm not going to do... Uh, so, for most people, doing the field of feelings is going to be easier than the observer. However, you know, I once uh, had kidney failure and chronic exhaustion, and I thought that was a clinical system, which I had every day, extreme brain fog and exhaustion. I met a spiritual teacher, told me to go to the observer, and, it, and all of it was gone in a split second. And my symptoms, which I was suffering from for a long time, were, would disappear. And I was, had tons of energy, like I never had kidney failure. So that, that is a miracle, uh, if you can go. Once you practice, whenever you can, on the odd occasion, if you practice the observer when you're in extreme exhaustion, at a certain point, it may not be straight away, you'll experience one time when you're in cr chronic exhaustion, you go to the observer and it lifts in one split second. So uh, once you... Now the thing with the observer is once you've done it once, it gets easier and easier to do it again. If you've never been in the observer with extreme exhaustion, it's like there's a very strong belief like it's impossible. So hence, usually for most people they find it difficult, but you know, you know, like 
uh, affirming things like there's no order of difficulty in miracles, which is a very strong course in miracles. You want to like, um, you want to, and you can take my experience. Like I have experienced being in brain fog and thinking I had kidney failure, and someone saying, you know, can you go to the observer of that, and it disappearing in a split second. When I had been suffering that for a long time, didn't think that was possible. So it's just my belief that believes that it's impossible for chronic exhaustion to lift in a split second. So that's something on the observer. Now, the observer is like tiredness. Some, some tips with the observer. Like if you can even listen to this video um, and just play back this portion. Like when there's chronic tiredness, you know, is to ask questions like, how am I experiencing the tiredness? Where is the limit? What's the texture? of the tiredness. So you're trying to get an imprint of um, the limitation of the tiredness. No, it seems like I'm in a big fog which is the size of this room, for example. Or it seems like once you get, um, the observer becomes very easy once you're aware of the limits of something that you're suffering from. When you go unconscious with a big like exhaustion or tiredness or brain fog or something like that, you identify into it and then it's like there's a loss of something which is witnessing it and is aware of how big it is, if that makes sense. So as soon as you listen to this video, there's like if you're, if you're in exhaustion, well, something, you know, how big is, does exhaustion fill the whole room? Is it filling the whole universe? What's the limit of it? What's the texture? If you get a read of like, oh, it's a big fluffy cloud which is the size of this room, but I can sense that it's the limits of this room, then there has to be something which is witnessing the limits of the exhaustion fog. Like, I would get an exhaustion fog, which I'd get lost into. But as soon as I ask the question, how big is it? And what's observing? Another quick trick with exhaustion and tiredness is remember that the observer, there is an observer that, flu that is observing fluctuating change. Now, the thing with, like, extreme exhaustion is that you get lost in it and it seems like you're in a fog of exhaustion and you can't think and there's nothing clear there. Mm -hmm. But you're lost in it. But the, the thing is, uh, if you listen to this video, it will help you. Mm -hmm. Like something might be aware of something fluctuating, like you're getting more exhausted, less exhausted, more exhausted, something's fluctuating. You know, like when all feelings come, they, there isn't any, then it's coming slowly, then it gets really, really big, then it might fluctuate bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller and then it eventually passes away. So as you're listening to this, this is, these are questions for the observer. What's noticing is, you know, from the last second, has it got, have you got into more exhaustion? So something then is noticing the changing nature of the exhaustion, which is not, you know, if there's a cloud, if there's a black cloud coming into the room, you know, suddenly, oh, there's a big black fog coming into the room. Something, even if the, the whole room suddenly becomes flooded in fog, there is something which observes the fog coming in and starting to leave. If you ask that question, suddenly it can click you out of being what I call identified or absorbed and lost in the exhaustion to some, suddenly getting an awareness of something that is witnessing the fluctuating states. Because these are questions, how big is it? What's the limits of the fog? What's the limits of the, I mean, when I have exhaustion, it's like a big fog and I'm lost in it. So what's the limits of it? Or what, is it fluctuating? What's observing the fluctuation? So that's a uh, thing with, um, so if I'm going to work, like I'm starting a new job and I'm getting, uh, I'm worried because I'm feeling quite exhausted or whatever and I'm worried about being at work. A um, few things, one is I'd be applying all the different tools as much as I can. So one of the things to realise is if I'm getting very exhausted very easily every day is there's a lot of repressed stuff. Because remember, like exhaustion, guilt, shame, fear, pride, these are all labels of diffuse repressed feelings. Yeah? So if you didn't allow it to label into anything, you wouldn't call it exhaustion, you wouldn't label it guilt or fear, it would just be a diffuse energy. So even exhaustion is like a label. So as you're doing feel the feelings, you're letting go of even the... Because as soon as you enter the label, oh, I'm exhausted, you're attached to that thought. You're giving form to the energy, does that make sense? You're giving a label to it, and then it's starting to take the form within the collective. Oh, we all know what exhaustion means within the collective, but if you didn't let it go into the label, the name of exhaustion, then it will start to, you know, 
putting a label on something already is a resistance and it's giving it power. Oh, it's fear. No, it's, it's exhaustion. No, this is guilt. No, let, this is a story about what happened yesterday. All of these are like putting resistance to just feeling, letting it be an energy that you're allowing without resistance to attach to. So before, if you get any time before work or after work, I always say to people like toilet breaks, uh, can be like an emergency, like an emergency hospital at work is like you need to go to the toilet. Or, or uh, you need to, I think it's like, I think for addicts, isn't it? It's like the, the toilet is either for acting out an addiction or for praying or connecting to God, isn't it? It's one or the other, so it's going to be your chapel at work. So, um, okay, brain, you know, overwhelmed brain fog. Even five minutes in a toilet can be, uh, you can do a lot of things. So you can do like, in, you pray intuitively to the Holy Spirit to guide which tool you use at each point in the day. So if there's exhaustion, it might be going to the toilet and uh, allowing the feeling to be felt for five minutes and just diffuse it a bit. Or it could be going to the toilet and practicing how big is this, what's witnessing it, what's observing the fog, which is not the fog, what's absorbing, what's observing the exhaustion, which is not the exhaustion. Now these questions, even if you take even if you've got YouTube and can listen to my video. Because sometimes you might have the thing, well, I'm not going to think of this stuff. You know, who's going to tell me to go to the observer of the I'm limits? put a picture of you in a frame can, on my desk. You can put, put a picture of someone who reminds you. I used to do that with Hawkins. Yeah. And uh, suddenly, actually, it really helps. Because as soon as just watching his picture, I'm digressing a bit. But I was in, I was in, uh, uh, I was working in a charity, phone to, making phone, phone calls for direct debits for, cha for charities, and I had a photo of like Hawkins, you know, with his big beard on the, on the table, and then the line manager, and I was the top salesperson, because I'd look at him, and then, you know, everyone would buy, that, you know, take out stuff, and then he'd go, I can't remember what happened, there was a little discussion, like, why have you got bearded men on your, <laughs> bearded men, pictures of bearded men on your thing? I think they did let it, but I was, I was one of the top salespeople, because I'd look at it, and it reconnected me to his energy mm -hmm. and to everything he taught. So suddenly, seeing a picture or hearing a teacher in those things when you can't do it yourself because you're too lost in exhaustion uh, can be different. I used to listen to spiritual teachers. Another thing with, like, if you're coming back late from work and you've only got a short period, another tool that I do, like, if I can't do the observer and I can't do field feelings, because it's... The more you get enmeshed with these states, the more the ego is defiant against doing spiritual stuff. It's like, I want to do addictive stuff, I want to numb out, I don't want to do spiritual stuff. So the thing I do is if I'm very, these are things I do, if I'm very much, and my ego is very defiant, like you've had a long day, like you want to, you know, you want to do something that is going to numb you out a bit, watch a film or something, then I'd say uh, I put on a spiritual teacher like, uh, you know, uh, like Hawkins or something, or the Observer or something, going, okay, my ego is just too defined, but if I listen to this guy talking about being in the Observer or cancelling my beliefs, um, also I do this thing, I think it's a great toolkit, is, um, you know, if you've got uh, Audible with lectures on them or you've got YouTube clips, having a little thing where you know certain videos are good for certain problems, like, okay, fear, okay, that YouTube video with that title, or this audible thing, like Hawkins has got one on healing or health. He's got chapter, he's got little bits on like fear, on uh, tide, you know, he's got all kinds of things, how to process different emotions. Just go to that. When you hear the teacher speak to you, sometimes when you're too exhausted to do it yourself, it can catalyze the Holy Spirit into the, into the energy of the dynamic or listening to a video. Um, the other thing is... Um, so that's the observer feel the feelings. Of course, the uh, course in miracles. You know, just praying for a miracle to see it differently. Another thing that uh, is just praying. Uh, also, you can pray to the Holy Spirit to reveal if there's any roots or any hidden mechanisms behind the exhaustion, which you're unaware of. And then it may come within a few days that the root of the fog is whatever it is, and you can place that into God's infinite light and love and pray for a miracle for that re to be released, because that sometimes there's a symbolic lesson in why there's exhaustion, uh, but you should be able to feel it out and go to the observer, uh, pray for a miracle to see it. When you're at work, now here's the thing, if you're practicing feeling feelings before you go into work or the observer or you go into the toilet, 
to practice the field of feelings of the observer or just practice your Course in Miracles lessons, it's easy to get a little break and go back into work and see how long you can last, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, also, all of these things, the observer and field of feelings, you know, like I say, you get, first you learn it sitting down in a quiet room. Like feeling the feelings, in the beginning you're learning it sitting down in a room, you're learning the observer sitting down in a room, but then later you're trying to learn to do, feel the feelings, allowing feelings not going into your thoughts walking in the park. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, can you allow all the feelings to come up as you walk in the park and not go into your head and not try and push them away? So you practice that in an easy, easy environment and practice the observer walking in a park. Um, then you're practicing it in a work environment. Now, of course, everyone will say that, you know, I go in, I'm in the observer and then something happens, I get triggered and I'm out of the field of feelings, I'm into the story. If that happens, then um, that, the, you have to notice what triggers you out of the observer or field of feelings. You know, is it your boss saying, you know, you look vacant, you, you don't look like you've had enough sleep? Then you realise that took you out, so that is a trigger you have to transcend. So then that's part of your Course in Miracles work. I'm going to transcend that there's nothing my boss can say or do that can uh, place into God's light that there's whatever it is that triggers you, like he shamed you or something. I place any shaming remarks from my boss into God's infinite light and love and pray for a miracle and pray for transcendence. That, you know, in future, any time he's coming at you and looking aggressive or critical, that the next time you should be less able to be hooked out or it will be less of an effect for you to be hooked out. So that's what I do. Remember, it's an assignment. I'm not saying this is easy, but I think it's a fun thing. Like you can tra it is possible to transcend a work environment. It's just, a, it's just a thing, a belief that you can't. You just have to transcend all the triggers you've got. Like usually for me, if I could transcend, like, you know, my, what's the worst thing I need to transcend? My boss comes in, says you're a fraud, you're useless, and you're fired. Mm -hmm. You know, that would, for me, I don't know, for anyone else, it might be something else. So if I, when I transcend the worst possible fear I have, and I do the processing on that, um, what happens is, you know, when you're exhausted or in extreme fear, you're connected to what I call, Hawkins calls it low attractive fields, low vibratory fields, where you're picking up collective thoughts from the collective at that frequency. So if you're in fear or exhaustion, you're picking up thoughts like, I'm, I'm too tired to work, or I'm scared, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be fired. Mm -hmm. So you're on that radio channel. So as soon as you process it up, you might go to the next one up, might be fear. Then you're getting, you know, a bit afraid, but then you've gone up a bit. And the next one, as you feel the feelings go to the observer, you might go and process, you might go to anger. So that's got more energy. You know, you know, if my boss says something, I'm going to kill him. You know, so you're picking up those angry thoughts from the radio frequency. Next one, as you go to... Now, here's the thing that I've noticed, I'm sure everyone will. As you process the feelings and do the spiritual work, your whole thoughts about the situation change dramatically. Mm -hmm. Like, when you get to peace, it's like, hey, even if he fires me, I'm going to kiss him. Yeah. And I know I've got a better, I'll get a better job lined up. The universe always works mm -hmm. out. When I'm in this feeling of trust and peace and forgiveness... Even if I get fired, the universe has got my back. Mm -hmm. So, or it's not a big deal. You know, I just tell him, look, you know, we can work this out. You know, you, your frame of perceiving it, because you're not in those negative states, uh, and the, the, the spiritual thoughts that come to you are now from a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're getting the Holy Spirit and the angels saying, don't worry, we've got you. You know, those type of thoughts come in. Uh, you'll start to see... Um, as you transcend situations, either people, their behavior will change towards you, or uh, I remember I was working with someone, and they had um, a, a very chronically high-stress job in a, in a, in a sort of a, sort of a high-performance role in a big company. And we started working, and she started doing all the transcendence work, all the work we do here, 12-step work. And as soon as she had processed a lot of the feelings and emotions and hooks, uh, she saw another job with exactly the same pay, with a different title, and she went for that job. And then, you know, I was speaking to her, I spoke to her regularly, and she said, oh my God, I'm hardly doing any work, it's very easy. And she was getting the same money, mm. you know. So those miracles, you realise, when you release stuff, release the tiredness, re release your fears, often a miracle will happen. Mm. So it's, a, it's an opportunity. 
There, were, there is another uh, tool, uh, quickly, Sarah. Yes, it, there is another tool. I, haven't, I'm, I don't really share it in this group. But someone reminded me of the thing, which is you can, I mean, it's kind of like a 12 step keep it in the moment. But it's the thing of just focusing on just what is now, you know, and not letting. So if you're exhausted, it's like, you know, you're just, what's the next right thing? Just the next one. You, or there's another tool which is like, you're just trying to focus on this moment and do what's appropriate for this moment and not allow your head to run into the next moment. And that becomes like a spiritual practice. Like, I'll give you an example. This is now, and all I need to know is to be here now and what, what needs to happen now. And if my thought goes on, what, what, what about <coughs> for the group? No, the practice is keep, let's keep it now to what needs to be done now. So that's like, that is, a, that is a spiritual practice which I don't often share about. I do, rarely do, but it is another spiritual practice, which is a, just keep everything in the present moment. And what you're practicing is a mindfulness of being in the now. Mm. So what does that mean? It means that you're practicing, when you're doing that, as soon as a thought goes for two minutes before, like I'm thinking what's going to happen in two minutes, no, let's bring it back to now and what needs, what, what's going on now and letting everything intuitively, what's the next right thing for now? Or if you go into the past, oh, you know, what happened yesterday? No, mm -hmm. let's keep it now. So you're just trying to be ever present uh, with things. Um, and... Um, Can I just go back to yes. what you said? It's yep. really interesting what you said. Yep. The root of all fears. So for example, if to do with tiredness and work, yes. I have 99 fears yes. around that. Yes. If the worst one, yes. you pull the root out of it and you become the observer neutral about it, all others fall away, Dr. Hawkins mm. says? Yes, that's, that's true. Yeah. So if I think about tiredness, I was even thinking about this as you were talking, yes. if I say, what's the worst that can ha happen if I'm chronically exhausted, yes. mm. I will fall asleep with my head in my notebook in a meeting, so that's the worst that can happen, okay, with that tiredness that day. Yeah. Well, that's not so bad. People are just going to have a good laugh, right? That... I just fell asleep in the middle of the... I've never happened to me before, but you never know. That every, every other thing, it doesn't matter then. That's right. It's just yeah. suddenly, you know, am I going to be tired on the way home or yeah. away in? All of it doesn't matter because that's the worst. That's yeah. right. That's the yeah. thing I try and do. Like for me in a work situation, it's like my boss will come in and say, you're, you're crap, mm -hmm. you're crap, you're useless, you're fraud and you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, uh, so... Fantastic if, I, if, I, if that happened... If I process that, then him saying like your yeah. performance isn't good enough yeah, or yeah. whatever, it's, it's like, good. hey, you know, I'm chilling out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can work and also, with this. We can work yeah. with this or something. But what I find is when I process all the fear or, mm. or go for the worst possible fear, is that I get totally different thoughts. Like yeah. when I'm in fear, yeah. I'll never get another job again. Yeah. I'll get a bad CV and yeah. I'll be, mm. I'll, I'll never work for the rest of my life. That's when I'm in fear. When I process out the fear, um, then it's like, hey, there's thousands of jobs in London. You know, you'll get another job. The Holy Spirit will look after you. So it, it transforms, you know, and you just, you just chill out. You know, if I'm doing something, it's like walking in the park is not stressful. Mm -hmm. So why is, you know, it's the boss and the, and the symbolic pr projections. Mm. I, need my money, I need money to live. I need my boss's approval. I need this, you know, all this. Is, if you render all of that meaningless... Actually, performance increases, creativity increases, flow increases, mm. and I have, I have a... Certain things are effortless. And effortless. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a lady that came in, I won't say who it is, comes to the group um, sometimes, and she was like, and I got what was happening. She, was, she, had a, she, had a, she had a good paid job in a company, and she wasn't doing much. The boss didn't really get her to do too much. She's paid a lot of money. Mm. And... And she didn't understand why there wasn't being pressure wasn't being put on her. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of said to her, like, you just sort of radiating out bliss and peace. You know, you're giving something to the company which people can't... They don't know what it is, but they want to keep you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing something good, and they can sense that. And I, I sensed it, and she was frustrated that she was earning, she was wow. earning all of this money, and uh, they weren't really pressing her, but I, I got it. You become an asset to a company um, when you know you're radiating out that thing. But often in the beginning, it's, trans it's hard work. You know, usually in the beginning, you have to transcend you know ugly bosses 
and tiredness, because the ego's hooking in with so much projections. Mm -hmm. So until you clear that, all that crap, uh, so there can be a lot of work, but usually when, it, when you cleared it, then everything starts to flow and think miracles and synchronicities start to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay.